Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, <laughs> this is a shampoo bottle, obviously. It's a fairly well known brand. Um, I don't have any affiliation with these people. It's just uh, this, this is a brand that I use. Um, I was looking at some pictures on Facebook the other day, uh, things that have been shared around, and someone shared uh, a series of pictures by an artist who, uh, I'm embarrassed to say his name escapes me, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the subtitles, um, who'd come up with a series of pictures of various craft that were basically reimagined from everyday household items, an absolutely fantastic series. And one of them was with this. Now, because this is a brand that I use and I had some bottles, I thought I'd give it a go. So we're not going to do an exact recreation of the picture, but we're going to do a little bit of kit bashing, uh, make a little starship of some kind, and we're going to use this as our base. So let's get on with it. So the first thing we need to do is clean up this bottle. Um, as you can see there, it's actually got stickers on it. It's not printed on, this stuff, um, which Part of me was a recycled, shouldn't that be part of me is a recycled milk bottle? Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, it's just, uh, yeah, so we can peel these off. Uh, if you do have a, a plastic bottle or whatever that's that's printed on, uh, you can get the, get the print off by using a bit of Scotch-Brite and some WD-40 and scrub it and it will come off. But this hopefully should just peel off. And then we'll give it a rub down with a little bit of alcohol just to get any residue off. Um, and then we can start thinking about sticking things onto it. Oh, the one on the front came off really easily. Oh. Ah. Get off. Oh. Right, so I've given the top and the body a, a rub down with a bit of uh, sandpaper just to rough it up a bit. And I've got some bits here that I'm going to start putting on. Um, I'm assuming I'm going to have to use super glue for this. I don't think anything else is going to work, but uh, we'll see. So. Just going to start attaching some pieces on. I should mention at this point that I have no real plan here. Uh, whenever I do kit bashing, I just start sticking bits on uh, that look like they should fit and keep going until either I run out of bits or I'm happy with the way it looks or I get bored of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's no real plan here. It's just stick bits on and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, yeah, it seems to be working. That's oh, that's not straight. I that one come off again now. Oh, it's not straight. <laughs> oh, never mind. Man, I'm slightly annoyed that I didn't stick that bit on square, but that's ah, all right, it will do. Right, this is another bit of 3D print with a, a, a pen lid. So we'll put this on as well. Thank you. 
Right. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, and I've got some bits here to go on the bottle. So. So this piece I'm adding now is uh, an old 3D printed part. And it was actually, uh, it's the repulsor holder for uh, an Iron Man suit that a friend of mine was making. And I printed four of them, uh, gave him the best two and kept the other two. And I do this a lot with, with 3D prints, things that fail or don't print properly or I don't need. I just put them in a box and I keep them and they come in handy for things like this. Same applies with this piece here. This is um, a part that I printed for uh, a part of a test for a print I was doing. Um, it's actually from uh, <laughs> a game called Astroneer. Uh, so yeah, but again, I got a few of these kicking around and it was handy for this. This is another piece from uh, Ast an Astroneer figure. Uh, this is the, the little gun that you use in the game to, to suck up bits of terrain and whatnot. So clipped a few bits off and it makes a good addition to the model. Um, now I'm just dressing up the sides with some uh, 0.25mm styrene sheet. Um, I covered quite a lot of the model in the end with this. Uh, it was basically just cut pieces out that suited, super glue them on. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to add other parts down the line because you can um, you can stick bits of model and whatnot to this styrene using modeling glue rather than super glue, and it makes life uh, a little bit easier. So yeah, this just was a case of of cutting out shapes that seemed appropriate, sort of fairly basic. Um, squares and rectangles and whatnot and and sticking them down with super glue so i'm going to uh i'm not going to show you every piece that i stuck on i mean you'll, you'll see the bits at the end this is just really uh to give you an idea of the process um and as i say it's, it's not particularly difficult cut out pieces stick them down and uh try not to stick your fingers to it uh so as i mentioned this is um some further pieces of, of styrene sheet being stuck on and now I'm just using the Tamiya Extra Thin uh, which is much quicker and much easier and much less messy uh, but you can just stick these pieces down and put them on just they uh, you know what are referred to in the industry as greeblies um, just little pieces that you stick on to you know make the model more interesting they don't necessarily mean anything or have any function they're just there to, to break up the surface and make it a little bit more interesting so yeah, I spent quite a lot of time just cutting out bits of card, um, plastic card, and, and sticking them on in various places as I was going along. And it really dresses up the outside, makes it look a lot more interesting. Uh, these are parts from various kits that I found in my kit bashing box. Um, I don't honestly know which kit these parts came from. Uh, I have got frames and bits of frames and sprues and things that people have given me uh, from all over the place and I keep them all in a big plastic box and I break them out when I need to. Uh, these pieces I do know actually. These came from um, a Revel Airbus uh, which I kind of butchered together a long time ago for my son to play with so a lot of these little pieces didn't go on. Um, and uh, so now they're being repurposed uh, all the various little I, I don't know what function they actually <laughs> carry out on the real aircraft but uh, on here again they're just to make it a bit more interesting so it's just a case of drilling a small hole sticking them on and away you go uh, another case in point here this is a um, an engine nozzle I don't know what kit this came from it was on a Hasegawa um, sprue but I don't know what the model was um, I've never built a Hasegawa model so this must be something someone gave to me so I just cut a 10 millimeter hole in the back of the uh, bottle and super glued it in and not only does it give us an engine but it makes it a bit more three-dimensional because it actually goes into the body rather than just sitting on the outside um, and this is another thing that's quite interesting is using part of the sprue itself 
uh, to add detail. You don't necessarily have to just use parts. You can use bits of the sprue itself. And I did this a few times uh, with this particular build. Um, these little circular pieces, I kept the, the legs on it and um, stuck them on as a, a kind of a guard surround thing for the, uh, for the lower engine. Um, actually worked out very well. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite pleased with the way that came out. It looks pretty good. Uh, more model kit bits going on. This, again, I think it's from the same model. As I say, I don't know what it is. It was just some frames that were given to me. Um, but these are the two halves of, I imagine, uh, a fuel tank. Um, so it was a case of rather than sticking them together, I kept them as two separate halves and, and stuck them down on the side like this. Uh, again, these are um, jet intake covers. Um, I'm assuming from the colour of the plastic and the scale of them, they're all from the same kit, but there it's just a lot of bits in a box that I was given a long time ago. They've, they've sat in a box in my workshop for a long time. Um, this is another little greebly that I made, again, using a circular piece of sprue. Um, the brackets on that... I believe came from the uh, the Dakota that I built recently. Uh, this is an interesting little piece. This piece uh, came from um, a terminal block. I cut the insulation off terminal blocks when I use them to make smoke machines and I always keep these little bits because I always think they look like little engine nozzles and so that's exactly what I'm using them for here. Now to fill in those holes uh, on one of those fuel tank pieces, uh, I've actually found some old um, cannons off of an ICM Spitfire. So I've, I've used those and stuck those on. And I used a couple of bits of undercarriage from another model behind those to hold them up and just add a bit of bracing. So you'll see that in a moment when it's on. Um, here, just more greeblies going on. You can see the, uh, the, the two grey struts at the back there behind the two gun barrels. They're basically bits of I think the undercarriage again from the Dakota I'm not sure I'm pretty sure it's from the Dakota and uh, yeah now we've got this big gap at the back to fill in <laughs> so I'm going to use this uh, plastic shot glass uh, to make the engine bell and um, I found another piece as well which is quite useful again from the Airbus it's one of the um, engine turbine fans so I uh, I super glued that in and then I'm going to super glue the whole thing uh, onto the back of the model and that will give us a nice uh, sort of main engine bell. So yeah, it's just a case of some super glue, hold it in place for a few seconds and yeah, we've got a nice set of engines now. I think it looks pretty good. So here's the model basically done. Um, I'm very pleased with how it came out and of course the uh, next step is to start thinking about putting some paint on it so that's what we'll do next. Right now before I can paint this I need to put it on a base so I'm going to use this uh, bamboo skewer uh, as a, a base. So I need to drill a hole in the bottom and put this through and then we can take it outside and, uh, and spray it. Now I'm going to use a primer to uh, unify all the colours and for this I'm going to try this uh, Humbrol uh, grey primer. Um, I've used some of the spray paints, spray cans, rattle cans from Humbrol before and they've been very good so I'm going to give this a try and so it works out. But I'm going to take it outside and spray it because I don't want to spray it in here. Well that's come out really well, I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with how that's come out, that primer. It's, uh, the first time I've used the, the Humbrol rattle can primer and uh, it's covered really well. So yeah, we'll leave this to dry and then we'll start putting some colours on it. That actually gave me an idea and I decided to use uh, another Humbrol can but this one's uh, a white primer so I'm going to put that over the top because the main colour will be white when we're finished. So after putting the white on uh, I'm going to start doing a bit of mottling on the white. So for that I'm going to start with this Royal Light Grey. Um, you've seen me doing mottling before but it, it never hurts to, to go over it again uh, for people who perhaps haven't seen it. But basically the whole point of it is to 
uh, create a shadow layer underneath the color coat in order to make it slightly less uniform and less monochromatic. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, basically, we just go over the panels with a random swirls and blotches. And when we put a, a thin color coat over the top, it will look a lot better. Speaking of which, here's our color coat. We're using a, a flat white this time uh, rather than the rattle can. And it is, again, just a case of making a fairly thin mix. It's about 80-20 and just lightly spraying it over the top of our mottling to blend it into the into the base coat. And what that will do, as I said, is just make it a little bit less uniform um, and add some, some tones and variations. So I decided to move on to the blue. And to get the color I wanted, I did a mix of these two Humbrol colors uh, to try and get the color I wanted. But unfortunately, as you can see here, it, uh, it didn't really come out very well. So uh, I had to have a little rethink about this. And I decided to uh, move on to <laughs> mixing a similar color using Tamiya uh, paints. The The main problem with the Humber one is it, it, it wouldn't even dry. Uh, it stayed wet for about three hours. And so in the end, I just I just wiped it off and um, I used this uh, the Tamiya paints instead. Um, mottling again uh, with this using the deck tan, which is a color I use a lot for mottling. Works very well. And uh, you can see there's a, a much better blue <laughs> finish uh, using the Tamiya paints than we got with the Humbrol. I really don't know what happened with those Humbrol paints, but it just didn't work at all. I'll have to have a look into that and see if I can figure out what the problem was. But uh, yeah, so this worked a lot better, as you can see. So now we can spray our blue over the top of it again, and that will give us the effect we're looking for. So it's the same color as the base coat, just a slightly thinner mix. And again, just to blend in the mottling so it's not so obvious, but it just gives you a nice little little detail and makes the, the surface a little bit more interesting rather than just flat blue. Uh, now for a bit of black. Uh, very little black on this. It was mainly just around the engine nozzles. Um, so what I did was just sprayed it lightly into the, the main engine bell and then just slowly worked my way back um, to just create like a shading layer on the inside uh, to make it look a bit kind of sooty. I mean, I know it wouldn't really be sooty, but, you know, just to get that effect. And then we sealed the whole thing with some gloss varnish. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this Humbrol gloss varnish, but honestly, I've never had a problem with it. I use it all the time and it works fine for me. So, yeah, but this is basically to seal all of these colors in before we start on the next layer. So I've decided to put a couple of little decals on um, because I can. These are some that I printed a long, long time ago for a different project and I printed loads of them. Um, they're just little grungy Union Jacks. So I'm gonna put a couple of those on. Um, and before anybody comments that it's not a Union Jack, it's a Union flag, the Royal Navy has stated quite categorically that they are more than happy for people to call it a Union Jack wherever it's being flown. So there you go. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, more importantly, we have to make sure we get it the right way up. So to orient a Union Jack the right way up, basically this wider white stripe above the red stripe here goes upwards and towards the flagpole. So if you're ever gonna hang a Union Jack, that's the way to do it. Right, so to apply these decals, uh, you can see I've got my little Airwick wax burner at the back there, keeping me water warm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's very simple. I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, decal setter uh, where I want the, the decal to be. And then it's just a case of sliding the decal into place and um, making sure it's adjusted and uh and sticking it down you have to be very careful with these uh printed decals because they they're very thin um and if you're not careful and these are quite old as well as i said if you're not careful they do break apart a little bit um but that's mainly because of the age of them it's not really a problem so once that was dry and i'd varnished it again i then moved on to put some um panel wash on it and uh I didn't want it too dark, I just want a little hint of colour. 
So I'm using uh, the, the brown panel wash and just going around the edges of the greeblies and the various bits just to um, make them stand out a little bit. But what I'm also going to do is uh, streak this. Um, I know, you know, it wouldn't normally have streaking because it's supposed to be a spaceship, but this one goes in the atmosphere as well and I want streaking on it, so there you go. Um, now to do this, I'll use the Humbrol thinners. The main reason I use the Humbrol thinners is because I like the shape of the bottle. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the trick is here, I'm using a, 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 a filbert brush and you just dampen it very lightly with the spirit and then very, very lightly brush over the dried panel wash uh, in the direction that you want the streaks to go. Uh, and you can see it basically, it removes the excess and turns it into a nice streak. But um, yeah, it's very simple. And if, if you don't like the effect, you can just apply a little bit more thinner, take it off completely and start again. And uh, once we've let all that dry, um, we can put some matte varnish on it this time and that will seal all the layers we've done so far and protect everything um, and get us ready for the follow-up. So yeah, uh, matte varnish, I find it's worth applying it very, very lightly. Uh, all you want to do really is knock the shine off. Uh, you don't need to soak it on, just put a little bit on just to knock the shine off and it looks very good. And the last step is to finish off the base. Um, I made a little base uh, from a, a piece of MDF and uh, now it's time to kind of paint it so it looks a bit more appropriate. Um, I didn't really want to get anywhere near the model with a big paintbrush so I'm just starting off with a bit of this uh, Citadel Chaos Black and just uh, doing around the, the, the top of the, of the stand and then I'll move on and do the rest of it with uh, something a little bit more appropriate which is this uh, Reeves Mars Black. Not quite sure where they get Mars black from, but there you go. Um, it's just black. Uh, so it's a case of just giving this whole base uh, a good coat of, of this black just to uh, blend it in a little bit, make it look a bit more spacey, if you like. Um, I have actually got a video up on Patreon of how I make these circular bases, if you're interested. So uh, do feel free to have a look at that. And that will be just about done then. And here is the finished article. Uh, this was fun. I enjoyed doing this one. Uh, it's quite interesting to, to take a real object and use it to create something inspired by someone who was inspired by the same object, but in a picture. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of come full circle. Um, so yeah, a little bit of kit bashing, always, always good fun. Good way to uh, use up a few bits and pieces that otherwise would have ended up in the bin. Um, you can do as much or as little as you like. It's all good fun. Anyway, I hope this has been of interest to some of you. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.